I respect your staying here, but you know I'm a fanatic. And I also have noticed that you are a fanatic. Two fanatics are in one compound. One will have to give way for the other. I said, okay, sir. Hello, thank you for tuning in, and God bless you. I'd like to remind you that after my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, my life completely turned around, and I see him intervene in every aspect of my life. i give you a short story of what he did one time. I used to live in a three-bedroom flat given to me by government. I housed someone, to, I squatted someone in one of the rooms. And by the time I went on a course outside town, they went and changed my name and took over the house. And government wrote me and said, come, remove your things from this house. It's no longer yours. Every connection I had on earth failed me. I had nowhere else to go. I ran to the special assistant, to my honorable minister, with whom I worked at that time, one engineer, Bala Kamafu. Bala said, well, I can help you, but where I stay, you can move into the boys' quarters with a family. I said, okay, because I was on a six-month course outside the town. So I was happy. I moved my family into Safi Street, number seven Safi Street, zone four, we say, in Abuja. And we stayed in the boys' quarters. While I was on course, there was a change in government reshufflement of ministers. This was during the military regime. And another military officer was brought to be the minister of the internal affairs at that time. He also came with his own special assistant who was a Muslim. And that Muslim decided to hand over that house to his uncle, who was Alahaji Adamu Shaibu, a one-time secretary to the FCDA. He, he came in, moved in, and was a fanatical Muslim. Permit me to add, I also was a fanatical Christian because all the flyers for our meetings and everything, I spread it all over the place. One day he called me and said, young man, I respect your staying here, but you know I'm a fanatic. And I also have noticed that you are a fanatic. Two fanatics are in one compound. One will have to give way for the other. I said, okay, sir. Two days after, he imported talks from Abaji, from his hometown, Abaji. And the talks moved in. And he told them that I should vacate one of the rooms to the talks. And I stayed with my family and my loved ones in one of the rooms. I never complained. I said, okay, sir. And I did that. And I continued my living. But it was a very frustrating, challenging situation. So one day, I was coming back home. And I cried from my heart to God. I said, Lord, even in my village, my father has a house where I could warehouse myself and my wife and children. Why am I suffering like this in this city? And as I was walking, I heard the Lord say to me, Son, know this today. No man living or dead will move you out of this house until I say so. Immediately, my heart was at peace. 
I got to my house and I said this to my wife. Say, honey, he said, yes. I said, whatever you give me, give to those young touts in the next room. My wife was a bit angry, but because she loved me, she obeyed me. When she made a beautiful breakfast for me, she made for them. When she made panda yam in the evening for me, she made for them. The young men ate the first day. They ate the second day. And by the third day, they disappeared. And suddenly you caught me that the scripture cannot be broken. I never uttered one word to them. I never challenged them. I never drove them away. They left by themselves. All because this God who has assured me that no man living or dead will remove me from there until he says so. Let me conclude with this. Do you know that I stayed in that boys' quarters for eight years? No man moved me until he got me another better accommodation. And I was moved out. Give this God a chance. And you'll see his faithfulness in your life. Thank you for hearing me. Hello, viewers. You heard Victor. Pounded yam. Instrument in the hands of God to break the hearts of thugs. Those thugs were brought in to check him out of that house, making life difficult for him. See, Jesus told us not to resist evil. He told us if a man slaps you on one cheek, turn the other for him. Jesus turned the other cheek. I mean, Victor turned the other cheek. If people persecute you, if people despitefully use you, pray for them. Be kind to them. Love your enemies. That is what our master told us to do. Why do you think those young men ran away? Why did they pack their things and leave? They did not expect that the person that they came to deal with was kind, was caring, was loving to them. And their conscience told them, this is not the person we should fight. And they left. Whatever they told the man who sent them, we don't know. But the principles by which we live are winning principles every time. The wisdom and the knowledge of God and the ability of God to solve problems, they will beat your imagination. Victor has more stories and many more stories to tell you. You need a relationship with God so that your life can be on top of every situation you find yourself. Not that difficulties will not come to us, but we have a problem solver in our lives. Please, surrender your heart to Jesus. You also will start experiencing the cover of God, the protection of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the intervention of God in matters where you cannot find help from another angle. I told you, that place they wanted to check him out of, he stayed there eight more years until you found a better accommodation. Only God can do such a thing. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Send this video to your friends and those on your contact list. Let them enjoy what you are enjoying by hearing what God is doing by way of mighty interventions in people's lives. Thank you for tuning in again today and God bless you.